So in this video, we'll continue our discussion on pipeline hazards. Uh, in the last lecture, we uh, discussed the various kinds of hazards and uh, one of the ways to uh, mitigate them or kind of handle them is uh, through the notion of stalls, bubbles or uh, no operations. Right? So one thing that we need uh, when, we, uh, when, when we need to stall a pipeline is a detector. Which can actually detect uh, whether a data hazard uh, is happening or there is a possibility and you need this detector uh, mostly at the decode stage right so that's that's where you actually read uh, the registers and and uh, most of the uh, hazards that involves uh, registers uh, are actually uh, affecting the decode stage and the write back stage right so it's simple uh, data hazard detector what it will do is it will actually just check uh, whether the register that you are writing back right uh, is it kind of same with one of the source registers so in the pipeline we have this interstage uh, registers and interstage latches so for example from execute to memory stage if uh, the destination register stored in the latch is same as the decode uh, execute uh, uh, latch uh, that that stores the source registers right so basically you are comparing whether rs equal to rd or rs equal to sorry uh, rt equal to rd right and uh, that can happen in the next stage also in the memory write back stage right so we are again comparing the same condition in this stage also so basically we are comparing the content of latch in terms of uh, registers uh, number register number and checking whether any of the registers are actually uh, the same if that is then then there is a possibility of hazard right uh, you may find uh, more subtle issues where, where you know but the instructions actually don't write into the registers uh, maybe they are writing into uh, the memory and then then the other other possibilities so you have to take the help of control signals on top of uh, these uh, latches that i have been uh, i have just talked about right so uh, this will be one of your uh, pen and paper assignment where you have to uh, go, go through uh, the logic of uh, hazard detector in a typical five stage pipeline so i won't go into the detail uh, of uh, this particular circuit uh, at the moment so instead what we do now we will uh, come up with uh, better solutions for mitigating uh, the hazards and uh, uh, for improving our uh, instruction throughput so now the first technique is known as the bypassing it is also known as forwarding okay so the idea is pretty simple and intuitive it just says that whenever you get the data route it to the needy instructions as soon as possible right so as soon as possible is the key so for example our writes uh, actually happening in the fifth stage in the right back stage but at the end of the alu stage we know the uh, result that has to be written into the register so why not propagate that value directly to um, the input of the ALU okay so uh, to understand it in a more more detailed way let us look at what I am talking about so let's spend some time here uh, so we are talking about data hazard that's the first thing and there are a few things that we, we should keep it in mind that this is our write back stage okay this is our memory stage this is our execute stage okay and uh, so let's say this is your fetch and decode okay so now uh, if you remember the previous lecture all the dependent instructions that were encountering let's say read after write hazard they were waiting for this particular event to happen right which is actually writing into the registers that is happening in the right back stage but if you look at the content of this particular data path right let's say for some register r2 you are, you are writing it right that particular content is actually either coming from here this is source one or it's coming from here so if it is a load 
so this will come from this stage if it is just an area operation it will come from uh, this stage right so the output is actually available either after execute stage or if it is a load after memory stage the, the the value that you will be writing into the register right? but in our vanilla five stage pipeline we are actually waiting for the write back stage to make it happen so what can be done now one thing that we can do is we can come up with a new path so the blue lines are showing the new path okay so let's call it np this is the new path so this is a bypassed path what it does it adds another data path from the output of the execute stage okay so this is the output of the execute stage uh, or more precisely uh, uh, you know the execute memory stage latch into the input of value stage so this is like if this is my execute stage it's actually doing something like this okay we need to do the same thing from the memory stage also for all the loads that are coming in right so loads also write into the registers that is another one right we need one more because it may happen that uh, at uh, this particular interval of time uh, the data is actually coming from both uh, from the ALU and from the memory right so we should have the updated data uh, if we are considering this unit of time right and that updated data should be bypassed again so that means uh, what we have done so far is we, we have communicated a new path from alu to input of alu sorry the second uh, new path was this one np2 we need another path right and that will be this one right so there are three uh, new data paths that are coming from the output of execute and memory stage so that should go in both the direction right because the alu actually uh, takes the output from a mux so you should provide this data path to both the muxes so this is the notion of data path where we are actually creating a new uh, path for the results to get propagated uh, to uh, the needy instruction and uh, mostly the needy instruction will need it at the alu stage so if you can just provide the data at the alu stage uh, the, the instruction can uh, continue moving forward so uh, let's look at how does it help uh, in terms of the temporal view right so this is the first instruction let's say instruction one and this is instruction two in the temporal order as you can see there is a hazard here there's a read after write hazard right in the normal pipeline what will happen this is cycle five In the cycle five the register write will happen so now the r1 is written back into the register five right and then at this moment you can actually read it you can perform the read operation of r1 right so that was actually introducing delay uh, or stalls right because you can't do anything here and you can't do anything here you can start the decode process but you will actually finish it here right so this will be uh, your uh, uh, instruction decode of the the final uh, stage of instruction decode and then you will start your alu and other stuff right but with data forwarding or uh, bypassing what's happening is remember we have connected the output of alu into the input that's what is happening here the output of first instruction which is the r of r2 and r3 so this is r2 this is r3 and this is actually the outcome r1 so that is kind of forwarded now to the input of value so now this instruction it can decode the register it can get the upcode and everything and it will directly go into the execute stage and this data path will provide the data right so the bypass data path has the data so there is no stall now the instruction is moving as usual with uh, the rate that it was moving before right 
So similar cases uh, you you will find in the later uh, stage of instructions also. So, so so you are you are performing a store here. Uh, that means you are uh, storing the content of R four into one of the memory addresses, right? And uh, here again you are reading a register, right? So what you can do again you can use the data path, which is a new data path, the bypass data path, right? The output of memory stage is connected to the input of it. So this is how we can actually mitigate uh, all the stalls because of data hazard. But remember, bypassing doesn't eliminate all the data hazards. So for example, if you take uh, these two set of instructions, in the first instruction, we are loading something into the R1. In the second instruction, we are reading something from R1. Okay, so again, this is a read after write hazard. But if you look at the pipeline, this is cycle one, two, three four and five the memory operation will happen here in uh, cycle number four right so r1 we will get the r1 here even if we have a bypass data path right but this guy is demanding r1 at this moment the next instruction is demanding r1 at this moment that's that's not possible because we are at cycle three the output to the bypass data path will be triggered at the end of cycle four so unless we do time travel back into the past we won't be able to do a bypass right so th this is not possible or, or in this case the bypassing is not helpful right so just keep it in mind that whenever we are kind of loading something uh, into uh, a register and then the next instruction itself is using that register bypassing doesn't help as we have just seen so uh, to get a better uh, understanding about the notion of stalls that we have discussed last time so if you look at the, this two sets of instructions r1 is dependent uh, which is creating a data hazard so the first instruction finishes in t0 to t5 t4 that's the five cycles next instruction starts on time but the decode is uh, kind of the bottleneck here. It's waiting for R1. So eventually we have spent three cycles on that. And uh, at, at the end of the write back in the first uh, instruction, we are actually reading that register, right? And then we are going for execute memory and write back. But we, with the bypass data path, now there is a path from execute output of the execute to the input of the execute stage right so now you can see that there is almost no bubble so in this case the cpi was actually greater than one because of the stalls here the cpi is still one right so this this is the beauty of uh, this additional uh, data path but but uh, remember bypassing doesn't eliminate all the data hazards and at the same time it doesn't eliminate the control hazard we will see what uh, uh, whatever can be done with the control hazards okay so in case of control hazards this is kind of a, a recap of what we have already discussed the various kinds of jumps branches and other things and what exactly happened to pc or how do we calculate the updated pc so this is just a recap material the key here is we get we know the pc at the fetch stage we know what kind of instruction it is, whether it's a branch or not in decode stage. We will see how to make it in the fetch stage, maybe in the next video. We get the register value again in the decode stage. We check the branch condition at this moment in the execute stage, right? We, we compare if, if uh, the particular equality or quality or whatever um, uh, is actually uh, true. Uh, and, and, and then uh, we actually uh, move forward depending on the branch condition. We can also see how can we make it in the decode stage, but at this moment, it's actually the execute stage, right? So now, uh, how, how to mitigate the stalls or delay because of the control hazard? Well, you can actually speculate. What you can speculate is my PC will be always PC plus four, which means my branch is not taken, which will work probabilistically, maybe 40, 50% of the time, but it won't work all the time. So for the cases where it won't work, what you have to do, you have to kill the pipeline or, or, or whatever we have discussed last time, you have to insert knobs. And as compiler, you know uh, whether the branch will be taken up by looking at the source code. So you can actually insert knobs uh, intentionally, right? 
So for example, uh, what is happening here uh, in, in this particular case is, so this is the entire fetch and decode stage. Okay, rest of the stages are not uh, important here. And what we are doing is the moment we decoded an instruction, okay, let's say we found that it's a jump. So we should jump to a new PC value, right? And then, um, so which means at this moment, we should uh, stop entertaining other instructions, which are, let's say, PC plus four, PC plus eight, or whatever, right? So which means we need to introduce the stall signal that we discussed last uh, video and we have to propagate that stall signal to the pc and the instruction register so that they won't be updated right? so eventually uh the wrong path instructions uh the instruction which are there in the wrong path won't uh, be executed and this this will not be finished right so uh same same thing for the condition branch all right you you actually check a condition and uh, based on that you move Again, here, this is the wrong path instruction, right? Well, what can you do uh, for, for the wrong path? Again, um, for all the jumps and browns and whatever, at this moment, what you have discussed is we can just kill them or we can just uh, insert knobs, okay? So th this is the uh, pipeline visualization for uh, control hazard and uh, what can you do by introducing stalls or knobs? So, here we are actually uh, executing a branch instruction which is going to pc304 and so whatever instruction that we have in between uh, should be killed right so this particular condition is evaluated in the execute stage so the moment we know that okay we are going to pc304 we should actually trigger the stall and start inserting knobs so again so no, knobs is actually for the compiler uh, for micro this is just the stalls okay so once you introduce knob so all the rest rest of the instruction between uh, the current instruction and the target will not uh, get propagated in the pipeline so the rest of the in between instruction the wrong path instructions will just uh, be knobs okay so one thing that we can do to improve uh, the performance of uh, branch instructions, right? So if you look at that, there are two kinds of uh, uh, control flow uh, jumps. So one is the normal jump where, where you know everything uh, at the end of the decode stage, whether uh, uh, it may be unconditional jump also, right? And the target where exactly you will jump, it's there in the decode stage. Once you decode the register, the lower bits will tell you, okay, this is where you should jump. The immediate field right uh, the issue comes with the branch conditions right and for the branch conditions you don't know whether the branch will be taken or not till the end of the execute stage and because you don't know whether you will uh, take a branch or not you don't know whether where exactly to jump the target address so when I say uh, branch taken or not, it's it just that whether, whether the condition will become true or not. So that will be done at the end of the comparison operation in the ALU stage, right? So can we do better? Uh, what can be done to, uh, you know, save one stall or one bubble here? Because we are doing everything in the execute stage. So the question is, can we add an ALU in the decode stage? So 